Hi everyone and welcome back to Luke's John Deere Garage. Today we're going to talk about installing a street legal light kit on your golf cart. This is the light kit from 10 LOL. It's available on their website and it is available on Amazon. And uh, let's go ahead and open it up and see what's in the box. All right, so here we have the instructions, some zip ties for the wiring, the installation screws, and I'm assuming the templates for cutting out the body are in here as well. Here is the horn, which is also part of the street legal light kit, so that's nice. Here's the steering column cover. We'll show how that goes on soon. Here's one of the LED tail lights. They have this nice protective film on them. You can see those look nice. Here's the main wire harness. Here's the second wire harness that plugs into that one. And you can see we have our hazard light switch here. I don't know if that's focusing so you can see it. And our turn signal switch that goes on the steering column. Here's the second LED tail light. And finally we have our two front LED headlights which also have protective films on them. You can see what those look like. They also have the orange light here for the turn signal. Get the film off of that. Go ahead and open the other one here. And we also have the brake light switch here, which attaches to the brake pedal. We'll go over that shortly. Now the other thing I purchased separately for the installation of this kit is this right here. This is a 48 or 36, a 12 volt reducer, a voltage converter for your golf cart. I highly recommend putting one of these on your cart. The cart I'm going to be installing this on has a single 36 volt lithium battery, so you need one of these to get a 12 volt power source. But if your cart has multiple 8 volt or 6 volt batteries, I still strongly recommend using one of these because if you put the load of a light kit on just one or two batteries, it will throw the battery pack out of balance and really shorten the life of those batteries that you run the lights off of. So this is just a few dollars on Amazon and very much worth installing. Let's go over how to do this. All right, so let's open up this instruction packet and find our templates. There's our front template. There's our rear tempo right there. Let's go ahead and cut these out. So now we're going to go ahead and take our newly cut out template here and you can see how that fits in this area on the front of the golf cart and I'm just going to use some painters tape to tape this here. And you can see that'll give us a good general idea of where this light's supposed to go. Let's go ahead and mark it. This is a little hard to do with just paper here, but it will definitely get us close. And 
we're gonna save this template because we have to turn it over and reuse it on the other side. Well, it just ripped on me, but we can still use it. All right, so we're gonna turn this template over and use it over on this side. Exact same way. Yeah, let's go ahead and mark this one. And now we can get rid of this. Okay, so the next step is to actually go ahead and cut out these holes. I found the best tool to use for that is just a jigsaw, so I've got a cordless jigsaw here which should make this pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and make some holes here for the blade to start in. Of course, confirm that there's nothing behind here before cutting or drilling into it, but I know there's not on this cart. That should be enough to get us started. Let's see how this goes. that hole let's go ahead and do the other one and some people will suggest you cut this out with a dremel with like a roto zip bit but I found that it's way easier to do a good job with a jigsaw and not get off the line so that's how I prefer to do it but you can do it both ways let's see how the lights fit in these holes That looks good there. It also ties in nicely with these fender flares here. Go check out my video on installing these fender flares if you're interested in doing that. All right, let's head on over to the other light. Looks good here as well. Let's screw them in. So I think that looks pretty good for the front lights here. Let's go ahead and cut out the back. Okay, so here's the back fender area of the cart. And we're gonna tape on these templates we cut out right here. These are a good bit easier shape to line up and cut out here than the front ones are, so that's good. We'll go ahead and mark that. that off of there and since these are a symmetrical shape here we can use it the same way for the other side use the same tape mark that down there now we can get rid of this let's cut them out Wait a minute before screwing these in because it's going to be a lot easier to plug in these harnesses if we can reach our hands through here. All right, let's go ahead and do this brake light switch here. So this pad here actually just screws right on top of the brake pedal here. Just kind of drop that wire through the hole underneath. This comes with these really short screws here, which just screw into this rubber pad. So let's go ahead and do that. And I know this seems kind of weird, but I've never had one of these fall off, so this should be all we have to do for this. Let's use the supplied zip ties here to secure this cable.
Okay, now we're gonna talk about this steering column switch here. So if your club car has this plastic cover here, which it probably does, I like to cut part of this out of the way because it'll cause this to constantly be turning on you when you try to use the turn signals. So let's take this cover off of here. And uh, you can see that this attaches to here with a couple of clamps and it's, it's just not gonna, not gonna stay in place well. So I'm gonna go ahead and and notch some of this out of the way here. So I'll show you how I do that. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with a permanent marker about where I want to cut it. And then I'm just gonna go at it with an angle grinder and see if I can get rid of that. And I wanna be careful to just cut the plastic. It's okay if I make a little bit of a mark in the aluminum underneath, but I certainly don't wanna cut all the way through it. So let's go ahead and try this. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what I do to deal with those things turning all over the place. Now let's go ahead and mount the switch. So the kit comes with these foam pads, which will also help grip the steering column and keep it from rotating. So we're gonna go ahead and stick two of those in the switch housing. And the other two are gonna go on these clamps. just like that. Now let's go ahead and install this switch. I'm just squeezing it a little bit here to compress this foam, keep it tight. And now that we've got them all started, I'm gonna rotate this into the position that we like, which I like to do pretty close to the wheel here so you can feel this with your hand as you're driving. And let's go ahead and tighten down these screws somewhat. I don't think that's gonna be rotating. And now let's put this plastic cap back on. And there's our steering column switch. Okay, now we're gonna remove this little dash panel on the cart. There's a Phillips head screw here and there's one on the other side here, which I've already removed. And now we just have to pry this thing out. It just snaps in like that. Be careful not to let the wires from the back of your key switch touch the metal frame here because that could cause a short in the electrical system. I'm just gonna leave that like that. Some carts have a slot here under the steering wheel so you can remove this piece all the way, but we really don't have to remove it. Our goal is just to be able to feed all these wires through that hole. I'm gonna disconnect some of the stuff that they give us on here to make it easier to push it through. And this hole here should be big enough to get all this stuff through without having to enlarge it. You just have to do a little bit at a time. Be patient with it. So as you can see, I did eventually manage to get all those through there. Now the next thing I would normally do would be to drill about a half inch hole in this dash piece here for this hazard light switch. But this being an older golf cart, there already is a hole here from something else. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. Uh, that's a pretty easy step normally. It's got a little plastic nut that threads on the back of it. And then we'll reconnect the same two wires that we just removed from it. And we'll go ahead and reconnect this flasher module here. Make sure this latching side of this connector lines up with a little bump here on this plug where it latches. Don't install this upside down because the lights won't work correctly. Now it's time to get to work on our main harness here. So. Remove this 
twist tie. And let's go ahead and get the seed out of the way. So let's go over this harness and figure out what goes where. So this is that large connector that we just fed through the dash over there. So this is going to go up into the dash area and connect to that plug from the steering column. Two of these are for the horn. Two of them are for the brake light switch. These are for the headlights and they're color coded so you know what's left and right. Back here toward the back of the harness. We have connections for 12 volts, which we're gonna to put to our 12 volt converter shortly. And at the other end, we have more color-coded plugs for the tail lights. So we really need to just start feeding this through here. I'm gonna drop it all the way to the ground under the cart here and uh, stuff these tail light wires here toward the back. We know that these two terminals need to stay near the battery. The rest of it, we're just gonna pull toward the front here and drop underneath the car. This wiring diagram that came with the kit shows us that the left lights here have the white connector and the right ones are red. So that'll help when routing our wires. Okay, so now that we've got this cable wire harness pulled under the car, we're just gonna go ahead and start plugging in things where they go. So we said white is left. Red is right, so I'm going to pull this through here, connect to the other headlight, and this big square connector is going to go up here and plug into this big connector that we pulled through. And I've also connected the brake light switch to the two wires that hang under the car. And these remaining two wires here are for the horn, which we'll install in just a minute. Now the next step is to just use plenty of zip ties. So just attach everything so it doesn't drag on the wheels or drag on the ground or anything. Use more zip ties than the kit supplies and just get all the wires tight. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes to do that. So you can see there's two wires remaining here at the front of this harness, and those are for this horn. So we're gonna go ahead and connect those to here. this little bracket here for the horn to attach it. It's not on there. Those threads are a little stiff so I'm going to grab a wrench and attach that and then find a place up there to screw the horn and that'll vary by cart but you can screw it or you can zip tie it or just find a place up in there to attach it so that it doesn't rattle around and fall out. Okay so we're getting pretty close with this install. Let's go ahead and start putting this dashboard area back together. Snap that back in there and we can use this steering column cover to cover up all these wires. Actually, I got it backwards here. That makes the install look nice and neat. You don't see any wires here. Okay, so the last step in this light kit install is to connect these two wires here to 12 volts from a battery. And I'm gonna show you how to do that the right way, which is with a voltage converter. We can see here on the back of this, we've got our input, 36 volts. Red is positive and black is negative. Then we've got our output, which is 12 volts. And black is negative and yellow is positive. So we're gonna connect these black and yellow to the negative and positive of our light kit here. And we're gonna connect these black and red to the output of our 36 volt battery. Now on this, we've just got two terminals because it's a 36 volt pack here. But if you're using regular golf cart batteries, it would work the same way. You'd wanna find your main negative and your main positive from your battery pack and connect this all the way across the whole pack so that it pulls all the batteries down evenly when you use the lights. So uh, let's go ahead and strip these wires back a little bit. And now for this, I'm just gonna use some crimp on butt connectors and ring terminals. So for our two input wires here, I'm going to crimp on some ring terminals here to connect it to the battery. And 
for our output wires, I'm going to use some buck connectors so I can connect it to our light kit. Now we're going to take our light kit wires and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the ring terminals that they put on here because we're not going to need to use those. Let's strip these wires back. Black here on the light kit shows it's negative, so we're going to connect that to our negative output on the voltage converter. And our red positive to the light kit is going to go to the yellow. And now we're going to go ahead and connect these input wires to the converter to the positive and negative of our battery pack. Okay, so now that we've got that voltage converter in and all the wiring cleaned up, let's go ahead and test it and see how it works. Left turn signal. Let's try the right turn signal. That looks good. The headlights are right here on the column, which is really nice. And the tail lights come on with the headlights. And I'll press the brake pedal so we can try those brake lights. That works well. And finally, the flashers and horn. So I think that's a successful install. And that's a look at how to install the TAN LOL Street Legal LED light kit on your Club Car DS golf cart. Special thanks for them for sending over this light kit for me to install and demonstrate for you guys. I'll leave a link to their website and where you can get this light kit right here down in the description. And I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to this video for more John Deere videos and golf cart tutorials. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.